Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to take a look at how to create an MVC application in Visual Studio. And we're just going to cover some basics, just a brief introduction to what MVC is and how to uh, create an MVC application in Visual Studio 2019. So let's go ahead and create the application. We're going to select ASP.NET Web Application using the .NET Framework. If it doesn't appear, on your recent project templates, go ahead and do a search for web application. As you can see, there's also a .NET Core. In this example, we're using the .NET Framework. Perhaps in another video, I'll cover the uh, .NET Core web application and how to do that. But for now, select .NET Framework and click Next. Make sure you've got the latest version of .NET and then click Create. This is where we get to select the project type and of course we want to ensure that we're selecting MVC and go ahead and click create again. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and let's load Word for a second. And I'm just going to cover over some real basics. So. Let's have a little quick look at what MVC means, what it stands for. So MVC stands for Model View Controller. There's also something missing here, which I feel is actually quite relevant, and it's a router. So what does all this mean? Well, you know, it's fairly straightforward. Essentially, a router, but when a URL comes in, will just determine what controller gets selected to execute that request. And as such, I'm actually going to move controller up slightly because I feel as though in terms of the order of execution, this is the order of execution. So basically what would happen is somebody goes to a URL, the router chooses what controller gets executed. That controller, I want you to think of a little bit like a bit of a page load. So if you've used um, web forms before or you've used win forms or if you if you've used any other type of programming language you'll probably be familiar with the concept of a page load so essentially you go to a page or a form and when that gets loaded some code will get executed and that's essentially the the first step the first line of code that gets executed when you go to that page well essentially that's what a controller is a controller will be a little bit like your page load. Now, what's the model? Well, the model is really a fancy name for your classes. So if you're creating, for example, a student booking system or, I don't know, a video rental or, for example, a Amazon type of shopping website, then um, you're going to have a whole bunch of classes. You might have student classes, sales order classes, product classes, video classes, those type of things. So essentially, your classes that you create for your project, whatever that project might be, whatever it is that you are trying to model, then you'll create some classes. And obviously, classes have attributes, properties, and methods, uh, and they will essentially form part of your model. So if going back to the original example you had a student booking system for example then actually let's look at a gym let's say you had a, a, a gym uh, website you, that you were creating then a gym website might have for example a class for customers or you might have for example a class for, for uh, well for classes different types of classes so aerobic classes uh, gym sessions, I don't know, uh, boxer size classes, that type of thing. So you'll have a whole bunch of classes and they will form your model. And the view, the view is essentially what gets returned to the browser. So someone goes to a URL. So, so it all starts with a URL. So someone goes to a URL, the router selects a controller. And that's where the first line of your code will get executed then the controller may create some objects from your model. Um, so it might create, for example, a student 
object from your student class. It might not, but it probably will. Um, you might create a, a few objects, set a few properties, execute a few methods, and then essentially you'll return a view with probably some data on it based on the results of processing in your controller and from your model. So that's a lot of theory in a very short period of time, but let's have a quick look at how this actually works. So I'm gonna to go to a view in the home folder and click view in a browser. So as you can see, we've got a URL here. Let me just go ahead and paste that in here so we can have a look at it and dissect it. So this is the URL, right? Uh, this is the domain, which for the purposes of this demonstration isn't particularly relevant. Just know that that's our domain. We're a local host and there's a port. So what we're looking at is a home and index. Now, when I was learning MVC, I always found it a little bit confusing as to how do I know where this is going? How do I know what controller it's going to? Well, it's fairly straightforward. Actually, if you leave the default settings of the router, all this really means, honestly, is home is a, is a class. I'm sure you're familiar with the, with the term and the idea of a class. And an index is essentially a method. But they're called slightly different things in MVC for the purpose of this particular idea. The class is called a controller. And the, and the method is called an action. So in other words, when you go to a URL, this is essentially the controller you're going to. And this is essentially the action. So let's have a little look. So this is the this is the view that we got back and the view is nothing more than HTML that gets rendered back in the browser. So when we go to this URL, I accidentally closed it, I'll, I'll open it again. When we go to this URL, we're going to the home controller and the index method. So let's have a look where that is. So let's go to controllers. This is where your controllers live home so we've gone to the home controller and inside the home controller we have an index method and it's not actually doing very much it's just returning a view and that view by definition by convention will essentially be the index view so if we go to views home so we're in the home controller it will return this view and as you can see the view is nothing more than HTML that's all it's doing it's returning this HTML so let's have a little look what actually happens here. So when you go to this URL, the first thing that we hit is the router. So you go to this URL, it hits the router. So if we have a look where the router is, the router is in here, root config. Now, honestly, the best thing to do with this is just to leave it alone, unless you need a particularly different or unique URL to do something fancy. The best thing to do is to just leave this alone. For most people, you won't need to play with this. But essentially, it defines the format of our URL. So essentially, what we've just talked about here, it defines this format. It defines the format of where's the class and where's the method, where's the controller, where's the action. So in here, as you can see, we're saying that after the domain, we're going to have a controller and an action, so a class and a method, and then we have an ID. Well, the ID is an optional URL parameter. And if you look down here, the defaults are, if they don't supply a controller, we go to home. If we don't supply an index, so if we don't just supply an action, we'll default, default it to index. And we'll talk about parameters another time, and this is just an optional parameter. So for example, if we go back to the URL here, if we don't go to this index, we don't add it to the URL, sorry, we still go to this page. And that's because here, we're specifying that the default is index. And likewise, actually, if we were to get rid of that, we'd still go to home, because it's actually populating this as the default, and this as the default. So let's go back. 
So obviously, as you can probably guess, if I were to change this last bit of the URL, as you can probably guess, we can go to one of these. So let's go to contact. And we've got the contact page. Let's go to about. We went to the about page. Now obviously, if I was to omit it completely, we go to the home page, which is the index page. Let's go ahead and change that so we can get an idea of how it works. So let's say, for example, we didn't want index to be the default. And as I said before, the best thing to do with this is to leave it alone. But for the sake of experiment, let's change it to contact. Let's build your project. Let's go back to the URL, click enter. It's loading and we got a contact. So I just wanted you to be aware, roughly speaking, how this works. So you go to a URL, it goes to the router. The router determines what controller to execute. So let me just change that back for now. Build it. And so we go to this URL. And it takes us to this page. And this page happens to be the controller sorry, that's selected is the home controller and the index method. So let's go back to the home controller. So this, this URL comes in, it says, okay, we need we want the home controller, this is the home controller, and index, we want the index method. Now in here, in here, this is essentially your page load. This is where you can do whatever it is that you wanna do. And so for example, in here, you might connect to a database. You might create some objects from your model uh, you may do some processing and then you're going to want to return a view and that's what's happening here now you can specify the view that you want returned but if the view happens to have the same convention here so you're going to have you're going to look in the in the views you're going to look in home which is here views home and then because it's the index action you're going to return the index view the convention is you don't have to add it and so essentially this is what gets selected and you can change this html to whatever you want it to be um, in future videos in the next video probably um, i'm going to go ahead and show you how you can actually pass data to this index view or any view but let me just show you something say for example i wanted to return another say for example i wanted to return a different view obviously we're just returning view so that the default essentially what it's doing is this it's saying that that's a ba that's basically what it's doing let me build that and just make sure it still works it should do Yes, it does. So, you know, the convention is that if you're returning the index view and you're in the index action result, you don't have to put anything. But it's useful to know because we can change this. So we can change that to contact, which would be a bit confusing, but the, for the purpose of this example, it might be useful to know that you can do this. So now things are getting really confusing because if we go to the home controller, the index method, we should get back the contact view. So I think that probably wraps it up for this video. So just remember that in MVC, we have this concept of a router, which does nothing else but looks at the URL and selects a controller. The controller, think of a little bit like your page load. It's the, it controls the flow of the, of the page or the resource that you're going to, okay? It will deal with the HTTP request. And we'll, we'll talk about HTTP requests in another video. This is just a brief overview. And so we've got a model. Now we don't have anything in our model yet. If you look here, you see, we don't have any classes, but essentially in here, what you would have is you'd have, let's say, let's for the argument's sake, let's just create a couple of classes so you can see what it would look like. You might have a person class. Let's add another one. You might have a property class, for example. Let's do one more. 
controller. You might have a, sorry, right click, add class, I clicked on the wrong thing. Um, you might have a student class. And of course, if we go back to our controller, that's where you'd use your model. So your model is nothing more than the classes that you create to represent some units of functionality within within your application. That's all the model is, okay? And so obviously in your controller, this is where you might create, yeah, create some objects from your model, okay? So let's uh, say person. Now that's not coming up because I need to do what? I need to add the namespace, right? So this will get added, that just got added for me. And now it knows that I'm looking for the models, yeah? Models, and I'm looking at these classes, okay? So let's go back, create a person, for example. So we created we created an object from our model. Now obviously this is just a demonstration, so our, our object isn't gonna be doing anything. We don't have any, any properties to play with, we don't have any methods to play with, nothing like that. But of course you might you might then for example go ahead and I don't know p dot I don't know date of birth for example and then you you might set that to something for example so that's all the model is. that's all the model is it's just your classes in your application and view we are returning a view once we've done some processing in this example we're not actually passing any data to the view and I'm gonna go through that in another video. I'm gonna show you how to pass data from your controller to your view. And it's really nice and it's really clean. And this is where this concept of MVC, uh, having a separation of concerns comes into play. Because if you've used uh, previous types of application, like web forms, for example, then actually they're kind of tightly coupled. So the code behind is tightly coupled with the view. And if, for example, your boss tells you that you need to upgrade your uh, your web application and use a different technology, for example, because it may do something that your current uh, web application doesn't do or can't do, then it's gonna be very difficult to actually extract all of that functionality from your existing web application. But in this instance, it's very clean. So the view is concerned with only what gets displayed on the browser. The controller is gonna absolutely just take care of the flow of the code and your model which is you know your problem domain your classes they will uh, be reusable across uh, any applications because they're just plain old uh, classes that's all they are and and that that probably covers everything for this video so we're going to go in future videos and look at different aspects of MVC um, I'm going to go through everything um, so hopefully you'll join us for those videos if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like the video. If you want to see um, more type of uh, videos like this, go ahead and subscribe. And hopefully that makes MVC a little bit clearer and you can see how this all hangs together. It's really simple, just some really simple concepts. You know, a, a, you, go to an, you go to a URL, that URL via the router gets mapped to a controller using the uh, process I've told you. So controller and, and action, yeah, controller, action, or class and method, that kind of thing. In your controller, you've got your, you know, here's your controller, here's your action, returns a view, create some objects. Those objects are essentially your model. Uh, and that's it, it couldn't really be simpler. Um, so stay tuned for upcoming videos. And until next time, take care everybody.